That is correct. Okay. And the U.S. takes very seriously war crimes, whether committed by our adversaries or even our allies. Isn't that right? Uh, I will limit myself to we certainly took that particular war crime very seriously. You served uh, in the U.S. Army, and uh, you were taught to obey the law of armed conflict, also known as the law of war, correct? Of course. Right, and so the U.S. goes great lengths to make sure that even our own personnel don't engage in war crimes. Isn't that right? Uh, that is what I was trained to do, and that's what I did on the battlefield. And the reason we do that is not because it's just a moral thing to do. It's because if we start engaging in war crimes and violating the law of armed conflict, it not only invites retaliation by our adversaries, it also is a great recruiting tool for terrorists. That would be correct, right? Um, I am trying to see where you're going, Congressman, but I have to agree with everything yeah, you've said. Thank you. So uh, earlier this year, uh, Army First Lieutenant Michael Bahena was pardoned by Donald Trump. He was convicted of war crimes. He was convicted by military jury for driving an unarmed Iraqi prisoner into the desert, stripping him naked, and shooting him in the head and chest. Do you think it was appropriate for the president to do that? I do not see uh, a conflict between the pardoning of people who have been convicted of crimes, regardless of the crimes, and the underlying uh, legal and moral issues. Uh, public reporting uh, is that the president is thinking about pardoning additional people who are charged with war crimes. One of them is Navy SEAL Chief Edward Gallagher. He was charged with killing, murdering an unarmed civilian girl, murdering an unarmed old man, stabbing a defenseless teenage captive, and then indiscriminately shooting machine gun fire into a neighborhood. What kind of message is it sent to our adversaries if they know that the president is going to pardon people who committed war crimes or are charged with war crimes? Again, pardoning is a legal and constitutional authority granted to the president. Uh, the president uh, is elected by the American people, and the president uh, takes decisions. Yeah, I get that, sir. I'm just asking you the message that is going to be sent. Uh, I would decline to comment further on that. All right. Republican Congress member Dan Crenshaw uh, has stated that he believes, uh, as I do, uh, that a military jury should first decide whether uh, Chief Gallagher uh, has engaged in these war crimes. <laughs> in fact, seven Navy SEALs reported him to Navy authorities because of his alleged heinous acts. Do you believe that a military jury should have the first opportunity uh, to look at the evidence in this case before the president pardons him? Uh, again, this is not my area of expertise nor what I'm here to uh, uh, talk about today, but I will say that uh, it's my belief that uh, we should adhere to our constitutional and legal procedures and processes uh, in each and every case uh, as a general rule. All right. So let me uh, move on to the troops we have in Syria. How many troops do we have in Syria? Uh, I can't comment on that. Uh, first of all, it's a, a moving target. And secondly, we're in the process of a reduction. Uh, it's considerably fewer than we had uh, in December when the initial announcement was made. It's, it's less than 1,000, correct? Uh, I'm not going to get into numbers. Okay. Donald Trump said he's going to withdraw 2,000 troops from Syria. So it's less than 2,000, correct? Uh, it certainly has dropped from where it was when it began. I'm trying to dance around this without giving right. you a specific number, but okay. you know what I'm trying to say. What is the mission of our troops? Our mission of our troops is to ensure the enduring defeat of ISIS and to maintain in that process stability and security in the Northeast and in Al the Altamp area. And our troops are deployed in combat zones in Syria? Uh, yes, they are drawing combat pay. And so you mentioned ISIS, so there's still ISIS in Syria? Absolutely, thousands of them. Okay, all right. So when Donald Trump said on February 22nd that ISIS is 100 percent defeated, that wasn't true, right? Uh, no, that was true. What he was talking about was the ISIS caliphate, which was defeated uh, along the uh, Euphrates. That wasn't what he was talking about. He was saying he was withdrawing all U.S. troops from Syria because ISIS has been 100 percent defeated in Syria. You can say what you think he meant, but he clearly said we're withdrawing all our troops. What you're saying now is, no, 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 we have our troops there because ISIS is still not defeated. So I just want to know. He talked about a gradual, uh, I believe it was coordinated and uh, deliberate uh, drawdown, right. but with some residual. So um, we can all read his tweets and uh, see what he said. But let me just ask you this last question. Uh, 
what is the uh, authorization for military force that the administration is using to have our troops deployed in combat zones in Syria without any congressional action? Uh, it is a congressional back. action based upon the 2001 authorization for the use of military force, uh, further by the uh, appeal to the U.N. under Article 51 of the U.N. Uh, charter by the state of Iraq in 2014 for assistance and help from its partners, one of whom under the strategic framework agreement the U.S. is, a memorandum of understanding uh, written at that time between the two governments, uh, and U.S. engagement on the ground first in Iraq and then because the threat to Iraq was coming across the border from ungoverned areas of Syria into Syria. That is the uh, basis for the authorization, Congressman. Uh, the, the time of the gentleman.